What do I think of formally proving software wherever possible? Um, I think if that can be done, it's a very good idea, right? Like the problem with software is like the massive complexity, right? And to the extent that you could formally prove something, you can sort of wall off that sub area of complexity as being like, look, this obviously isn't where my problem is coming from because it's proven, right? Now that's a little bit too simplistic and naive, but still it's kind of true, okay? So if we can do that to the extent that we can do that, it's actually a very strong technology, right? Now, the thing is, it's just not that easy. You know, I'm very interested in advances in that field, but the only idea people seem to have had for the past 20 years is to like make systems based on type theory or whatever. And I just, I don't feel like that's the right way to go, but it's because that's what happens when, when you have programming language PhDs working on this problem, you get type theory answers. But I do think that in general, it's an important field. Rust and borrow checker. No, I mean, that's not really like the borrow checker in Rust is very, very weak compared to what the question is asking about. Like formally proving software is, I mean, it's kind of like proving a mathematical theorem where you have an actual text of a proof that's like lots and lots of steps. And what that proof proves is that your code does what you claim it does and also <laughs> doesn't do bad things that you claim it doesn't do, right? I think it's, it's important. It's one of the potential, what would you call it? Like very big advances that you could have in software if we somehow figure something out there. But new ideas are required, like the current, you know, it's not just incremental small work to get us there, right? Now, the thing that I think is interesting about Rust is it is to some extent like some kind of less powerful, less expressive language in a certain way. I'm not saying that as a diss, but what I'm saying it as like it doesn't let you do a lot of things, right? And because it doesn't let you do those things, certain aspects of what you can do are more provable, right? And that is a technological advance. Um, that's not like full provability of a program, but it's provability of certain aspects of a program, right? And so I would be interested in seeing more approaches like that. Like I'm dropping down to a, a more, like that can't possibly be the only more limited model, right? There, there's probably other ones that are good. And maybe you could switch between them depending on what you're doing. I don't know. Like if you can drop all the way down to a state machine, for example, to do certain tasks, you could prove a lot about a state machine because it's, it's fundamentally weaker than a Turing machine. So um, that's the thing. Weak sounds like a negative word. And maybe, maybe I need to come up with some more positive connotation word, right? Um, like weak and limited sound negative, but when you're using machines that are less strong than Turing machines and more limited than Turing machines, you can prove more, right? So um, yeah, it's just interesting. Trying to make an AI product based on formal proofs. You mean something that like tries to prove programs seems hard i mean here's the problem here's the problem i have with proofs aside from that and you know maybe maybe this is just what it, how it has to be but like Okay, so when you go to programming language school in academia and they want to teach you a bunch of useless things, um, you learn about this pseudo-functional way of writing down 
a programming language semantics called denotational semantics, right? And they seem cool and important because it's like, oh, here's a purely functional and therefore correct representation of what your language is doing. And you could test against this and all that, right? And they'll also teach you an older model called operational semantics, which is like denotational semantics, but like with string operation. It's like a string machine that you're implementing your programming language in terms of. And there's two things about this. One is denotational semantics and operational semantics are actually the same thing. It's like an illusion that they're any different from each other, first of all. And then secondly, it's just, you know, one of them looks like it's covered in functional language sauce. So you're supposed to like that one better, but really they're the same thing. They're, um, they're symbol languages that you translate your program semantics into, right? The other thing though, is like the only time you could ever write down those kind of semantics and have it seem meaningful is when you're talking about trivial stuff anyway. Like if you're actually gonna talk about all the things a modern compiler does, the, the semantics would be just as ununderstandable as your actual program because it's just another programming language, right? It's just like standardized and not very good. <laughs> so I don't know, there's these people who, who obsess over these things in academia and it's really weird and non-meaningful to me. But, but the reason I brought that up is just to say, like your proof is gonna be in most cases as complicated as the program, right? And so, okay, well, you, you know, you have an automatic proof checker to verify that everything the proof says, every step is correct. That's fine. But what the part that it feels to me has to be manual, and AI could help with this, but someone has to check the AI, is that what the proof claims it's proving is what you want your program to do. <laughs> because as the statement of the proof becomes more and more complicated, it becomes as complicated to understand that as it does to understand the program. And so how do you know that the proof is proving what you actually want, the behavior that you actually want? It becomes very hard. Does this relate to the halting problem? Actually, at a very vague level, it does. It's kind of a different thing from the halting problem, but ultimately, maybe these are the same. There's research in that area also making sure your spec actually represents what you want. That's good. And, you know, I'm just saying it seems like a hard problem. But just because something's a hard problem doesn't mean we shouldn't be trying to solve it, right? You know, I have a lot more respect for people working on provability than I have for, like, randos teaching object-oriented programming somewhere, right? Like, one of those things is a real problem that we're really trying to solve and another one of these things is a different